This video is for everybody without a tracking mount that would like to take AVI clips to the moon for stacking. For the video, I'm using a Dobsonian telescope. You might have an altazimuth or something like that. That's fine. The lower the focal ratio, the easier this is going to be, though. Before we begin, there's some people who may not be familiar with the ecliptic, but that's the imaginary arc from east to west that the sun rises and sets in. And you'll notice at night that the planets follow really closely to this same imaginary line. So being familiar with that is very important. And because we can't track, first thing you need to do is make sure that your telescope is in focus. Next thing you need to do is determine the path of your object, like say the moon. And you want to be ahead of it slightly so that you start your recording just as it passes through the frame. In the event that your camera is not tethered to a computer or you're not using a webcam, for example, my Canon 60D in video crop mode requires that I press a button on the camera which causes shake. So don't be scared to start the video before the moon ever enters the frame. That's not going to matter. Give your, give your telescope time for the vibration to settle down. So here's a rough drawing I made illustrating the idea. We're just aiming at a position that the moon is getting ready to pass through. That's all the time we're going to spend here. We're going to assume that you have your AVI already and move on to the next step now. So here I am on my computer and I took an AVI clip and I want to show you this because this is untracked on a Dobsonian telescope. It was really windy that night so it was a really good chance for me to show just how crummy this can be. You have to excuse my computer, it's a little slow, but you can see the wobble from where uh, I started the video, and you can see how shaky it is. But this is the natural movement of the moon through the sky, how it appears, and this is in video crop mode with the DSLR and Prime. The wind was a factor. It's pushing the telescope around and that sort of thing. So there's quite a bit of wobble. And as you can see, it's there's absolutely no tracking here. And most people will tell you you couldn't make use of this in Registax 6, but there's a, there's a way around that, and I'm going to show that to you. And uh, hopefully uh, give you some tips that will help you out with AVI stacking. Now, granted, this is a, a dot movie file, and that's how the uh, Canon EOS 60D records. But I'm also going to show you how I convert that for free, and I'm not using any kind of software that's going to give your computer a virus, which is common. Um, it's a really good program. I'm about to, I'm going to show you. But yeah, this is the full movie clip. I think it was roughly 255 megabytes. So if hard drive space is an issue, um, when we convert this thing, it's going to be roughly 5 gigabytes when it goes to AVI file. And you can see the wobble where I stopped the video at the end. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Oh, and quickly, here's the uh, moon that's not in a video crop. So if you're having trouble um, getting a long enough video because of the focal ratio of your telescope and video crop just uh, shoot it in, in normal um, 640 by 480 or if you have the webcam um, use that also but either way um, video crops unnecessary you'll just get more detail so the program that I use for file conversion is a program known as PIPP I'm going to open that up and show you the help file and give you an idea of what it looks like and it's planetary imaging preprocessor it's freeware and it's actually a stacking program too if you want to try something besides Registax it's really good a lot of people prefer it over 
Registax 6, but just drag your file into there, minimize the preview, expand this for you. Okay, you go to the um, top right tab that says Output Options. You see that there? And then you can see the file types you can convert to, and select AVI. You also have the option of um, selecting the folder that it goes to. Then you'll go to Do Processing and just click on the Start Processing tab. It'll take a little while depending on the speed of your computer, but this is an absolutely safe and free way to convert file types to AVI. So now that we have a video file in AVI format, I'm going to open it in Registax 6. Now the beauty of the video crop mode on the Canon camera, the 60D, and any other Canon product that has video crop, has actually got 60 frames per second, and that's a lot. I've got over 6,000 frames just in that untracked video clip. But what I'm going to do is come down here to the slider where it shows the frames and I'm going to pull this over until I get the moon centered in the frame. Basically you want to start with the frame that looks like how you would like to take a picture of the moon itself. I'm going to center it up here. Now with the align points, I, I use the set a line point tab even though it gives me this outrageous amount here to use I'm going to reduce that down you might think it's kind of odd just how few I use but you really don't need a lot I'm going to um, right click these ones towards the bottom and erase them out because my moon passed in the video clip from top left to bottom right I want to use the upper leading edge of the moon, the terminator, which is the shadowed area. And then I'm going to hit align. That's going to take a little while. Again, depending on the speed of your PC. So that was just 26 align points. And I've got a minimum distance from edge of 25 or thereabouts. So now that it's done aligning, I'm going to hit limit. You can see here just how terrible my align points were because just how much movement there is in the frames. That's what that's showing. So now that that's complete, I'm going to click on the stack tab. Okay, so that stacking's finished. And if you see at the bottom, there's over 2,000 in the frame stack. That's pretty good. Come up to wavelets now, and with the wavelet, it's it's a matter of preference. Um, I've got my own scheme that I saved for that, and I'll show it to you in case you want to use it as a basis for yours. That's how it will appear when I apply the wavelet scheme. A lot more detail. It's progressive from layer one down. You see 70, 80, 90 on. That's the important part. You see how I have my um, sliders set up. This works pretty good for me, so that's generally what I stick with. Uh, the number six wavelet will make the biggest impact, so I'm going to back that off just a touch. go to do all. Now pay attention to these areas here because anytime I use a video clip like this I, I'll get these but don't worry about it because you can edit that out. So I'm going to save this and then go to Photoshop and with the clone tool I grab a dark area of the frame of the background sky and just blend some of that out and you might not have much luck with that because you see it is, it's not the same as the shade as the rest of the background but with the levels you can you can balance that out without affecting the image too much you just pull the slider over a little you see that 
that works really good. But yeah, that that will appear in a lot of my images that I produce from uh, untracked stacker. So, yeah, that's the clone brush tool. That's also uh, really valuable for chromatic aberration if you have a lot of that a purple glow around your lunar phot photographs. But anyway, um, so this is a fairly decent image produced from an unstacked AVI or dot movie file, I should say, but a video file regardless. And a lot of people will tell you that you, you need to track in order to do it. And um, I don't like the word can't. I don't use it in many of my uh, sentences. So I hope this video was encouraging to people who can't afford uh, motorized tracking or go-to mounts. Now, granted, you will get much better results with a tracking platform or a motorized EQ, but this makes it available for anybody. And I've tried this with a lot of different telescopes, uh, a lot of different camera lenses, that sort of thing. And uh, having a lot of drift in your frame doesn't matter if you if you uh, use Registax in this way. It works. Uh, if you don't get the exact results you want the first time you run through it, try it again because each time you process the Registax is slightly different, and you'll see that also. But I wish you the best of luck, and hopefully this opened a door for uh, somebody who, who doesn't have that kind of equipment and just wants to make some quick photographs from stacked AVIs and movie files. And as always, I hope you guys have plenty of clear skies.